day snack in the mornings, eat a huge lunch, and then end up skipping dinner? Opposite for me, skip breakfast, snack for lunch, big dinner. What is your favorite sandwich? Egg mayonnaise, no fuss, good thick well buttered bread, loads of egg mayo, heaven. I want to visit Japan or South Korea, because those guys absolutely nail the egg mayo buddy from what I've seen on YouTube. I just like ham, cheese and salad on white bread with mayo and a little whole grain mustard. Salad is tomato, onion, cucumber, beetroot and iceberg lettuce. Pretty basic dot unless you consider burger sandwiches. I have dozens of favorite sandwiches. Lately it's been a turkey and Havarti grilled cheese on sourdough bread. Nice simple comfort food kind of sandwich that goes really nice with a bowl of squash soup. White bread, preferably Heiner's in the red bag, Jiffy peanut butter, and bananas. With a side of Snyder, of Berlin Pa, barbecue chips. Open face dark rye bread. Thin layer of butter. Two slices of very creamy cheese. One or two pieces of lettuce. Gravlox or cold smoked salmon. How has a vasectomy impacted your life? Best decision I've ever made. I healed very quickly. No pain. Game changer in the bedroom. I'm in my mid-30s, and plan to get a vasectomy in two weeks as a surprise for my girlfriend. I definitely don't want kids, she doesn't want kids with me, and we both know the relationship isn't likely to last forever. I'm looking forward to never having to worry about the consequences of coming during, and I'm sure she'll be very happy too. Highly recommended. It was easier than getting my teeth cleaned. Doc was in and out in five minutes. Just make sure you strictly follow the post-op instructions, particularly testing requirements. Make plans to be able to just sit around for the first few days. Well, I'm done after two kids, both still in diapers for context. We're mid-30s, that's old enough. While being a dad is one of the best things I've ever done and I love every second of it. My energy and patience as well as my wife's is exhausted on these two. Also, once you get serious about trying for kids and or have unprotected regularly while she's on birth control, you can't go back to condoms. Birth control kinda. With my wife after a while so she was off it well before we even got engaged. Was happy to use condoms then. No shame in saying no more condoms and getting the snip. I'd rather just be sure with my family planning. I mean, it's pretty great removing one of the principal stressful things about in general, especially if you know you don't want to get anyone pregnant in the future. I got one post kids, and it's been fantastic having one less thing to think about when navigating sexual relationships. Just peace of mind. If you are sure you don't want kids or have already had kids and don't want more, there is no downside barring medical complications. But it's an outpatient surgery and a pretty simple one at that. My only regret is that I didn't get it done sooner. How often do you type a reply then think what's the point and delete it? I actually just did that in another thread. Usually it's because I want to refute what someone said, then I think of all the ways they would attempt to refute back, so I try to think of a foolproof comment that will cover everything I have to say until I realize I've been sitting on the toilet for way too long now and there's no way I'm changing anyone's mind and I don't even know you people. Every single time. Especially when it comes to my own feelings. People say don't bottle it up let it out. But then get absolutely upset when they are the reason you need to let something out. It's easier to just shut up I guess. It's often because, 1. It's really technical, and the simplified version I just typed out will raise more questions. Two, The person I was starting to reply slash comment to was arguing about something in bad faith and their only goal is to win an argument by being more willing to reply more. Everything my wife whinges about pointless stuff and I can't be asked to get the fine reply when I day she's being overdramatic. Context I had a text to say the loo roll wasn't in the holder it sat on top, seriously. Probably 2x or 3x a day for short responses. Or occasionally when it gets to be over 10k characters and I don't want to spend any more time editing it down, so I'll save it for later in case any of it is relevant in the future. Way more now as a seasoned veteran of social media. With Reddit it's about 3 tenths I'll type up and then delete. With Twitter it's more like 9 tenths I'll type and delete before hitting send. I'm growing up finally. Work emails on the other hand. Fairly often, since English is not my first language, sometime I think that it doesn't worth the effort of explaining something long, and if the person replies to me, and I have to write something long again. Often. I don't want to spend hours arguing my virtues to whatever rabid political party goon wants to misconstrue my argument and shove me into whatever political box they've decided to other people into. Delete and move the. On. Let them feel gratified they won while they cry on anti-work about how unjust the world is while not doing anything to change it. Or in the case of righties, whatever sub they circle jerk on. I've learned my lesson. Someone who has already decided you are wrong or not on their side, will never seriously consider what you say in a way that will change their perspective. I don't mean that as an absolute, but it's more often true than not. Rarely. I realize I usually delete my replies because I'm not satisfied by what I want to add to the conversation. That, or I don't know how best to phrase what I want to say and would rather just not bother. Probably more than I should. It's usually because of a worry about how my wordage will be taken in or not wanting to deal with a potential conflict. Lately it has been messages that I think about sending but don't. It happens less on Reddit. I don't doubt myself nearly as much here because of the anonymity factor. They feel like they're still the fat ugly kid they used to be? I think people always carry their past experiences with them. Even when you're 30, the 12 year old you were is still in there. You have to be kind to the child in yourself and treat them with compassion. How do you know if a girl actually likes you because she is interested in you or because she sees you as a nice, safe guy to spend time with when she doesn't have other options? If you are asking this question, it's because you either believe it is the case, or your insecurities are convincing you it is. I love being in my 30s if you're over 18 and you've both had before. Are you having? That's how you know if you're not. Does she break off plans with you to spend time with someone else? That's how you know have you ever caught her checking you out? That's how you know when the two of you are physically close? Does she hug you like a brother or do her hands slide and linger? That's how you know if you have to ask the answer is probably she's just not that into you anyways find someone who's excited to be with you.
Look for the signs of actual chemistry, attraction. She initiates with you when you kiss and try to break away. She pulls you back in. Eyes widening when you take off your shirt, or just roll up your sleeves doesn't revolt at your scent when, lightly backslash sweating, doesn't need you to always shower before getting intimate. Even better if it actually gets her going she steers conversations towards sexual themes lots and lots of touching you. Give it a go. The worst thing that can happen is soul-crushing emotional trauma, and financial ruin that grinds your hopes and dreams to dust as you enter a downward spiral that ends in homelessness, destitution, and addiction where your only happiness comes straight from the tap of some dude named Ted. Lol for real though? Go find out. Women are strange and complicated beings whose intentions cannot be known beforehand. Be brave, little toaster, and accept the risk knowing that everyone gets their heart broken at least once. So if it's your turn it's best to get it out of the way and learn something from it. Speaking as a girl, maybe I see you as a nice, safe guy and that's why I'm interested in you. The only way to know is to ask. I can only flirt so hard, my man. I mean there's a difference between spending time and flirting so you just gotta pick up the clues and if you're not sure but you think there's flirting then just ask her straight up. Whatever made you think she sees you as a nice, safe guy to spend time with when she doesn't have other options means that's all she sees you as. Any other option you come up with is just made up in your head and not real. Put a premium on your time and your feelings. If you had to work through to move the relationship further, and she doesn't, it means that she either doesn't want you or considers you as a backup. Let her know of your intentions, and that you will not be her side piece in any manner. Most of the time, direct communication is best. I'd girls tend to not need a man these days you know, and they have lots of options, so I don't think they really do the latter. Unless she has a history of constantly being in, bouncing around relationships. Read the book No More Mr. Nice Guy by Dr. Glover. You will learn how to guide a relationship and know if she is interested or not and not waste your time wondering or unsure.